minutes in and NKG beat Aqualix. And they beat Aqualix, a team who's able to get that aggression in a much more coordinated way. This should be a game that Nocturne should win pretty handily. But of course, we were also saying that KCP should beat Wave Runners, and we know how that ended up. First yeah. band coming out on Cafe. It's going to be Nomad. Not a crazy band. Maybe maybe for, you know, maybe for Cafe, it's not all too common, but it still happens, I would say, semi-often. Yeah, I mean, so often, so Nomad's a good band. Well, most maps, not every map, but most maps, Nomad. Getting with those air jabs can be a decent ban. Thatcher's always banned out in maps like Cafe and Clubhouse because of how powerful we saw how powerful Thatcher could be in previous maps. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we have seen how powerful Thatcher could be on Cafe. I feel like we reference that game at least once a week. I mean, to be fair, it was a uh, it was a seminal point in our uh, in our casting career together. But um, anyways, getting Thatcher off the board does mean since that Nomad ban that there is all the hard breach at Nocturne's disposal to start things out. Have that Maverick on the board as well, so it won't matter too much, at least initially. It'll be a little bit more difficult, but nothing, I'm sure, that they haven't prepared for. And with Valkyrie on the board as well, we, we all know Valkyrie. We all know why yeah. she's powerful. Does mean, though, that Mira is in play on Cafe. We saw Ooh. how well last week in the Group A game that you and I casted, Benny, how Okami, they bring out a Mira, and that seemingly stumped SH a couple rounds. Prompted was a wall. Prompted was, was a, a wall. powerful wall. <laughs> The, yeah, having Mira available makes things so much different, but we're not seeing it brought by Wave Runners. They're going to Fireplace to and Dining. Well, I mean, Fireplace. Fireplace and Reading. I was going to throw some cheese in So either way, we're Dining and Close Reading enough. for our first defense. And the Mira usually is brought here because of needing to you know, take control, or at least have control of that top floor for as long as possible. But we're not seeing Wave Runners. Maybe they don't run it. Maybe they don't scrim with it. You can do that a lot. I mean, they are, they are also a team that, as we saw... All right. As we saw last week, as we've seen time and time again throughout the season, they do like to keep using the motif of Aqualix. They do like to play a little bit fast, a little bit loose. Mira, you can still get a little bit aggressive. You can play off the site, but it does usually revolve around playing and holding that position and then maybe trying to take a gunfight based off of it, but still holding it nonetheless. For Wave Runners, they're a team that likes to play more off-site, a little bit more fluid. A team that doesn't have a solid IGL, it's a bit understandable. It's a play style that worked against KCP. Gets Nocturnes, it'll be difficult, but it could work here as well. Good work here. Let's see what happens, though, how Nocturnes play this out. So, of course, the first step could be, doesn't have to always be, but is to roam clear. But at the same point, you also, if you join out quickly, maybe you could find a crack of stunning a holding a dirt crack position like those white stairs. Though the top of these white stairs is a shotgun. I'm not sure if Lackey is, wants to run with that shotgun, but Lackey playing that LMG now that the rifle has been nerfed and Maple ready and ready with that shotgun to stop that white stairs push because sometimes the old teams will do that. They'll try to bypass and push straight into sight by taking control of white stairs early. Lovely, taking a lot of damage to our train. Our teams also take control of, you know, horizontally. They'll go for this train construction push or train push into fireplace. So far, this could be the first engagement, the first death. It looks exactly like what Nocturne's are going for. Freak able to swing around, finds the head of Lovely, perfectly framed above that railing inside of the train car. That's the opening pick, going in the favor of Nocturne's. And, as you said, Betty, they're not going for that standard roam player. Well, they're going for it a little bit, but they are mainly focusing on this push inside of dining from train, a push that maybe we don't see as often compared to the other takes this map, you know, clearing out the top floor, but still one that is common enough where it's not all too surprising to see. Lackey moving to this white repel is a bit of a risky position, but they do have a drone watching those stairs, so he can play that spot a little bit more freely. Oh. There is also Niccolo up top, is able to spot the feet and the leg of one oh. member, but all the shots go wide. Freak will rotate back off, but Nocturnes have a lot of the control at their disposal they need to make this push work. I say that's point Nocturnes have control, but there's still crossfires and still that vertical pressure that is big. You can't push on any well, you could if you run through it, but you still have people inside a freezer trying to deny it. It's a 4v5, and they're looking to find some more picks here for Nocturnes to make this happen, because if you walk right into dining, there could be a lot of crossfires. Smokes come out to try and let Exod walk into dining and get the push happen. Lackey still making sure nobody runs out and kills him. Exod getting this plant down over by the reinforced wall. They know he's there. They stop the they stop it. Great job from both members on by weight runners. Freak gets one kill. Maple and Venna fight back. They deny the plant and they make it a 3v3. So far, it's kind of a one-dimensional push here from Nocturnes and Wave Runners are playing it well. 
That's the issue, is while you had Lackey on that repel, Freak was the most direct player to cover Exod's plant, and once he fell, it's a lot easier to swing that if you go with multiple bodies. Now a 3v3, Lackey will fall off the repel and go in the late round for that push-up white he tried to do earlier. He'll send two impacts in, but does he know Ven is there? Well, he certainly does now. He'll let off a couple shots in response, and as Nocturne's flood the site, they manage to catch the mute, or the smoke, back on the rotation up. Nicolo, he's still up top, or now he's rotated down. He was up top, he's able to land the pistol kill. Put Mo on the floor as well. Both with a pistol, doesn't stop the bomb going on the floor. The Maple stops Nocturne's chances in this round. A nail biter towards the end, but it still results in Wave Runners eking out a victory in round number one. I was close there, Niccolo. Scary moments for Niccolo there. Let's go from the beginning from the round. That was a somewhat one sided push from the side of Nocturne's, only taking control of train and making that push happen. They could have taken control of 90 and had another angle on people inside, you know, between sites or inside of laundry. But of course, you had someone in freezer from the side of wave runners upstairs that denied that 90 push. So in the end, it was kind of Nocturne's just making that one side push to train into fireplace. And of course, wave runners were waiting and ready, getting those kills, denying the plant, even though it was on that reinforced wall. So good shot from wave runners. They stopped that from happening. But then at that point, because because there was other players like Blackie going downstairs to White, some of those Wave Runner players look around expecting some kind of different push from the side of Black yeah, Nocturnes. Now, it doesn't really happen though. As soon as Mabel gets that one kill, or I mean, he denies that or stops that push from Blackie, he turns around and the players from Nocturnes that push on the site, gain those kills, but Niccolo in the nick of time does get two kills, denies the plant with the pistol in his hand. Well, leaves in and that's the. That's the important thing as well, is that on the initial push into site, Niccolo hadn't rotated de back down yet. He was still up top. It was the players on the site from Wave Runners who were able to counter the push from Nocturnes, but if that bomb goes down successfully, maybe Lackey's able to find an angle, or Freak wins his gunfight, that's still a Nocturnes round, because yeah. the biggest counter for Wave Runners, Niccolo rotating down, wasn't happening in time. Just goes to show that Nocturnes, they had a solid opportunity to win it because of one or two gunfights, or maybe one bit of timing. One Wave Runners were in. But now they won round one, moving back down to Kitchen. It's another standard setup overall from Wave Runners. They have a Mute Namazi to Nye Intel. Also, some operators to Waste Utility on the site who could also roam upstairs. They also have this Echo. We've seen how powerful an Echo, really on any site, but Kitchen, especially on Cafe, can sometimes be. With this patch open as well, you have plenty of opportunities to get Intel on the top floor and see if Nocturnes are roam clearing from this side of Red Stairs. Intel is important here, and of course you see on the other side of Wave Runners there also is that anti-Intel, that denial of Intel from Maple and Niccolo specifically, using those Mute Jammers and those Mozzie Pests, trying to make it difficult for them to drone out, and low of Lovely already running to one player of Lackey, running into Reading, some quick control thought to be gained by Nocturnes, they'll poke some holes, and there's the Intel perfectly. They see one player, the Ash of Freak, pushing straight into Christmas. Give the intel out so those players who are playing White Stairs are aware. Maybe can pull back, not get into too many fights. And so far, it looks like they're Wave Runners are trying to waste time, waste utility. And so far, they seem to be doing just that. I like, the, I like that setup from Wave Runners. They have the flexibility of being able to rotate back down. And while it is just an Aruni gate covering that hatch, that can be burned by a flash grenade or what have you, any kind of projectile, it's still a bit of utility that Nocturnes have to keep in their pocket if they want to go down that hatch. So a little bit of best of both worlds, but at the same time also master of none in a way, or at least master of stalling out on that hatch. But a minute 30, if we're talking about stalling out, Wave Runners, they've rotated back, and Nocturnes are still playing catch-up. They're still trying to move onto that second floor. Haven't even started their soft destruction yet. FICO not able to go to work with that sledgehammer just yet, but that might change in the coming seconds. They're finally there, and that hatch is open, so if they're going for a freezer oh. drop, that's good. But it makes this vertical play all that more important. Nickel also using those drones gained by the Mozzie Pest to drone out, see if he can coordinate some C4s from below. I believe there should be at least like one or two C4s. Maybe honestly, Silent Maple have lost both the C4s and no kill so far. So maybe not. Oh, they're out. They're out of C4s. Oh yeah, they're out of C4s. So there's no vertical play to be happened. Fico gets the first kill of the round onto Maple. Well, the C4 didn't get a kill and neither will Maple anymore for this round. Now at this point, it seems to be pretty stable now. It's where this is the point Nocturnes have to make the play happen. They're trying to find more picks from above, but it will come to the point where they have to drop down the hatch and make a play happen. And whether or not Wave Runners are ready for it is going to be the problem. They feel reinforced white, though, so nobody inside of VIP can stop this drop. Well, here's the thing, though. Wave Runners, they've all started vacating this site, except Niccolo, who is now dead. And, well, I was actually about to say, most of the players from Wave Runners had started to move off the site. And as they started to move back, they've now all fallen. Lovely, he'll take after the Aruni from the rounds prior of Niccolo. He'll land a pistol kill. 
But that's the only kill achieved by Wave Runners in this round. Nocturnes were able to get a 4v1 post plant bomb down on the floor. They have full sight control. Lovely does have these angles. He's able to spot one, but it's still the advantageous position for Exxon and Nocturnes as a whole. Bit of a loss and a misfire on round number one, but a clinical dominant take by Nocturnes in round number two. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah, the start of the round was not really a not really a crazy roam clear. Just both sides just using utility to deny each other. You saw the pushing them roam, back. That clear from Nocturne just you know trying to find anybody, couldn't find anybody. Some good anti denial from the side of Wave Runners, costing them half the round. But once they got to that vertical destruction, Fico gets that first pick, and there were two players. You saw one. You saw Lovely try to rotate up red. It does get a kill. You saw I think it was one player of Vena trying to go up brown. Later on in the round, and really, and none of those flanks really happened. And the players who were on site trying to deny that push the bunker both got taken out on the drop into a freezer. It wasn't just a brown stairs flank either. There was somebody peeking their head up red, somebody peeking their head up white, and somebody peeking their head up brown. Some tried to flank, some rotated back, and all of them except Lovely didn't make it out alive. So Yeesh. wave runners, it wasn't a wasn't a terrible strategy, but just leaving nobody on the site except Niccolo alone to counter the plant. You gotta have somebody down there with him to try and play for his trade or hold it off a little bit longer. Relied a little bit too much on those yokais. Not confident in their strategy or nocturnes or their ability to counter nocturnes push. Wave Runners will rotate up to Bar Cocktail. Bringing out the castle and the Aruni. Might see somebody playing aggressive inside of Cigar, but since they reinforced that hatch, I doubt they will, because if they do, they'll have a powerful angle with that shotgun up close, but not many avenues to rotate out. So if Mabel continues to play over here, it's going to be a bit of a risk. With the hatch closed and no shield, if he's pushing the issue in this area, he doesn't have a lot of places to go oh, if he starts he's getting pressured. Him. He's 12 hitting ah. the Castle Barricade, so he can hit it gotcha. once and once out. So there is a way out, but like this is just reminds me of the Okami game last week, remember? Yeah, when, but yeah. When Afer played that exact position on that hatch. Oh, and they saw that last time, though the hatch was soft, though, so it could leave. So the question is, how will Nocturnes deal with this? Because as long as they can destroy the Castle Barricade, they could easily deal with the player inside the cubby like last time. But exactly. Like he's trying to push up white this time instead. Looks like they're trying for a different play. Is someone reading? Does he know the player reading? He does not. The information ah. is not Nocturnes corner silent gets the first pick and so far can they get this refrag onto the jaeger sound though he's by himself and reading you saw the drone from nocturnes coming just a little bit late but a bit through the wall fico able to land the refrag on the silent he did lose lackey who appeared to be getting aggressive and eager to push up those white stairs once the moment proposed itself or showed itself but now he's not going to he's unfortunately silent but silent will fall thankfully exod just barely oh no that's freak i thought that was a defender but we'll spot the leg of freak as freak continues to move on in inside of reading and if you haven't realized yet this is a cocktail take coming up from nocturnes two players down below trying to put pressure on the players sitting on side cocktail balcony on the one hand it does put pressure on the players sitting on the side for wave runners they can't play as comfortably there but it does also mean that the majority of their defense placed over on the side of cigar is it being pressured so far yeah so they can they can just sit there for the moment they're usually when we see these plays someone usually someone from the other side of the attacking team will later on go for that kind of play where they go towards that side just to make you know a diversion or try and get those picks when they least expect it for the defense though so, Michael here trying to get a kill with that grenade does a lot of damage in the Kylo. won't get the kill though and oh walking down the stairs perfect moment for lovely walks on the stairs get the kill but freak has made his way onto site he takes one of his own mohawk has gets another of his own and freaks there oh. the second is down to venna now in a 1v3 plants going down from eggs on venna's trying to make their way back on the site though where is these players on the side of nocturnes venna does he have any intel on his side he's looking around trying to find any player he does not know freaks waiting in the freezer for him and it's nocturnes to take another one well, see, that's the issue there. While Nocturnes did not apply pressure to that cigar side what whatsoever, as made evident by the end of the round, they didn't really need to because Wave Runners, you had Niccolo move on down, did manage to take Fico off guard, so that was a solid play. But the moment Nocturnes flood the site, that's the moment Niccolo pushes down. You just have a 4v4 on the site, but the numbers quickly started dwindling down in their favor. Nocturnes freak on the entry. I believe, did he get a 3k that round? He might, I yeah, might I be he wrong. Got two, he, got, he got one because he got the refrag. You got two yes. walking into sight and three at the end there. So 3k overall for Freak. He's able to make that entry into the site. You have that play down below, but now that Nocturnes have control of the site, it doesn't really matter all that much that you made that play down since your entire presence on the site has now fallen. Wave Runners, after that loss, they're going to rotate to second floor. 
but not reading. What was the last time we We're saw going to mining and dining. I, you and me personally, I want to say we might have seen it in the PB game, but I might be wrong. PB Wichita Wolves game, but I don't know. I don't even know if it's it either did once or never. I'm sure we we we've had to have seen it at least once. I I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't think I've casted. I think the last time I've, I feel like the last time I've casted a mining dining site was with cookies. I could, be wrong. I could be wrong. I know I've casted it at least. I haven't casted this in a while because not many teams play it, so it's so difficult. Like it, it's such a difficult site to play. So hey, what if if wave runners have a, a a strategy in mind, this could throw nocturnes off because not very often do you see this site. Well, I will I will I will say, of all the fourth bomb sites in the game, this is one of the more defensible ones. Sure, it might not be as good as some of the other sites, but it's certainly more defensible than say like bar stock on oh, yeah. clubhouse. True, it's true, still a site yeah. where. You have some strategies that you can make work, and a lot of it, kind of like, kind of like basement on Chalet, does revolve around holding that upstairs floor, or the floor directly above the site. Maybe not as deep a roam as, say, that site, but holding upstairs inside of Cigar, which is aided by Niccolo on the pulse, and overall just having a having a presence upstairs to deny the vertical play. That's a big key to trying to win this site sure. for the defense. And while there's nobody in there right now, there are players who can contest it behind shields and long angles for wave runners. Definitely. We saw last time, though, we saw, you know, previous rounds, Nocturnes didn't want to roam clear when it came to that, this, oh, the reading site, the reading and dining site. So this time looks like they may try to actually roam clear these players, or at least maybe trying to at least try to take out some of them. But here's, of course, you hear the barbed wire and white stairs once again being broken by Lackey, I'm assuming, like per usual. Lackey seems to be wanting to push that white stairs every single time, or at least tease it every single round. And the first pick goes to not anybody on the side of Nocturnes. Freak goes down. Niccolo will get that pick, but won't be able to finish them off, unfortunately, with that ump. Click out the intel oh. through the wall. able to land the pre-fire onto Exot as well. Excellent play by Niccolo inside a train right now. Just chilling inside the site. Not even playing all too aggro compared to the rest of his team. Freak is able to rotate back down those red stairs, so it's a 4v5 for Nocturnes. But there's Starfragger. Freak, and especially Starfragger in this match. He's on 25 HP. Those... Quick entries into the site to try and get the bomb down are going to be a lot harder now that one or two bullets from any gun could take you down. Lackey will finally try to make his push up white. He sends a concussion forward, but two defenders rotate over, set up a crossfire to force Lackey back down. Niccolo with the second kill, finally finishing the work he started on Freak. Lackey has an impact, but it's countered and mitigated by Silent. Baiko, he's able to even things out though. We're on a 2v2. Diffuser not in the hands of Nocturnes, but with 50 seconds left, they have time to rotate over, pick it back up, and it's still even man count. Certainly Winnable for NKG. Fuck, Fico has a good point here, but does can they control? Can Fico hit both angles though? He's trying to control both one and two. He takes out one. Great shots on to Silent. Now has hotel control of fireplace. He doesn't know that there's the last player of Vena playing inside a fireplace. Doesn't matter though. Plants down. They can back off. He's sludge. He can go upstairs and just sludge the floor. Vena now has to try and go for this defuse. It's counter defuse, but no, at this point, no. Fico's above them. Mohes is outside the window. Flashes come in. Vena is stuck between a rock and a hard place. He's got to go upstairs. He's got to look for a fight with that sledge of Fico, but Fico's in a place where he's knowing that he has to walk upstairs. At this point, Vena, he's getting shooting left and right. Doesn't know where to look. He's going to go for that disable, and Mohes is just going to put him down. Three strong rounds in a row for Nocturnes, though that one wasn't, say, as strong as their cocktail attack. Once Fico was able to land that entry in the side, move it to a 2v2, the positioning he took was extremely powerful. Wave Runners, they were pushing separately. One player inside of Dining trying to make his way into Train, the other pushing in from Pillars. He's the one that got the most aggressive, but they didn't know the position of that sledge. They knew they made his way into sight, but he was checking mining. He was trying to find the player with the diffuser. There are some angles in which you could find the head and maybe get a round winning play by just knowing your angles. But since they didn't have intel on the player that was covering, Fico was able to take him down. And at that point, the moment they realized that the other player isn't dining, they just isolate him, rotate off, and they can close out the round at that point. Still a solid attempt overall by Wave Runners, especially Niccolo making so much room for their defense overall. But despite his best efforts, the players and Wave Runners, they weren't able to play to the same pace as the Pulse. Yeah, I said Niccolo there was, a, was really the stopping for that first start from... Nocturnes, because you saw full force, they were trying to come up with those red stairs and make that play happen, but Niccolo was able to stop that from already happening, Freak being stopped before he even get into the site. Really, that was a good start for Wave Runners, but as you said before, Fico being able to make his way into the entries was huge. Five seconds 
I'm surprised there wasn't any kind of vertical pressure though. Nobody was playing Christmas. Like, like they wanted to hold upstairs, but nobody from Knock the side wave runners was playing like above in Christmas to hold that angle from jumping in the window. Oh, we'll go. Oh, well, that round's over. We'll go on back to reading and dining, which the last time they won this site due to some kind of one direction when Knock turns is a really good place from the Nicolo. Nicolo would get that flank, the dying seconds, denying the plants. And getting a couple kills. And really the beginning part too. I think it was Freak and Mohes in the beginning part. When they first tried to make that first push from Train into Dining. They were able to stop that push the first time. So we'll see if they can do it again. And if Nocturnes once more are going to try to just ignore the roam. And, and again, the, the biggest part was even though they lost it. It was still an incredibly close round for Nocturne. So going back to this site. It's not some Goliath that they're not going to be able to tackle. They were able to handle it pretty well previously, but again, a couple key moments is what swung it against them. They'll start full clearing the roam. So already a bit of a difference than last time. As you said, they tried to ignore last time, but this time they're trying to burn those arena gates. Bit of a misplay by Mo, but not nearly as bad as Raffi last week. So <laughs> we don't have to worry all too much. Able to take down that shield, though not the arena gate. So actually might have something in common with him. No diss to Raffi. I just, I just, I just remembered it. And you had to bring that up. I feel bad for Raffi, for Raffi now. Raffi knows, Raffi knows I love him. It's fine. That's, oh, I love you, Raffi. That was unfortunate. But here we go. Freak making his way into Whitehall. See if they can push that first player and make the way into at least try to you know, push these players back. And more than anything, there we go. The players in Wave Runners already pushing back in the first minute and a half gone by. So they have wasted time. But is that a sufficient amount of time to waste before ditching this entire top floor? I would say it's I would say it's not terrible. They have C4s to try and to try and counter anybody playing up top this vertical play as well. But Freak slowly creeping his way down row white. Oh my god, did they have any idea? Okay, no. Silent. I don't think he had the idea. He saw the drone, but he's going downstairs, so he won't come face to face with the Goodnight Master himself. But Freak does have this angle, and while they do know his position, combined with the vertical play from FICO, if they're able to make it go down successfully, looks like it could be exactly what is going to win Nocturnes this round. Like he's able to get a kill off of it, take down one of the only C4s. Now the only other C4 goes down on the side of Wave Runners. The Nocturnes, they're living and dying by this vertical play, but so far they're doing more of the former than they are of the latter. Oh, another player 90. Oh, Mohes can't make the shots because you can't look directly down here in Siege. So Mohes will miss that kill into Niccolo and Niccolo will run free in 90, running away from those vertical angles. And yeah, like I said before, these vertical angles are living and dying by it, but 25 seconds left to go. Now they have to push away into sight. Is there any way they can die as plant? Silent has a good position. Is the intel in their flame? Oh, and Niccolo doesn't know. Jumps right back into sight, not knowing the rain. Lackey dealing with Silent on the flank. Fico gets the last one in the vent and a flawless round from Nocturnes. They take another and they're 4-1 in the lead. It was just expert vertical play overall by Nocturnes. Able to get two, almost three kills, but still two kills guaranteed onto the players down below. Sure, they only had 25 seconds left, but all you really need at that point for attacking a site like Reading and the take Nocturnes wanted to do, all you really need is that vert, vertical control, a pick or two, and you can move on in. The only player who was the really the big question mark in that round was Silent. He rotated downstairs, might have been spotted for a second on that drone, but he clearly made enough noise that Freak relayed to the to his team, hey, somebody's downstairs, probably the Jaeger here at the 416. They have somebody watching that angle. It's also a 5v3, so even if Silent was not down there, they have the manpower to watch that angle. So the moment Silent falls, somebody had already died before that, it's a 1v5. The only player who really had the biggest potential to bring that round back for Wave Runners had no impact whatsoever. I asked him before though, was that one minute and a half enough time wasted? I would say it would be if Wave Runners were at, had some success actively countering the vertical, say from a C4 from either Maple yeah, or Lovely. Yeah, indirect C4, yeah. Uh, but but they didn't do that, so yes, by the end. Oh, well, that's unfortunate for Wave Runners. We're on to the last round of their defense, and they're going back downstairs to kitchen cooking and kitchen service, which last time. The big part was that there was a roam game. They wasted quite a bit of time in the realm. No kills, though, from both sides. And then at that point, it was Nocturnes pushing into a freezer take. And the only person really on site to stop a freezer take was Niccolo. And he could not stop the ongoing rush of three members walking into Bunker. Well, Nocturnes took things a little bit slower last time with their push. Maybe we'll see them switch things up for Kitchen and go extremely quickly, not clearing out the entire map. They're not going to do that. They are just going to clear out 
the map exactly like they did last time, but they are making a fairly quick entry into the building. Somebody immediately, two people in fact, immediately drop a red hatch 40 seconds in and start quickly mo moving their way and clearing out this third floor. Whether by pre-placed or active droning by their team, whatever it is, it's a pretty quick clear for a third floor. Now they just have to move their way down the second, but now we have a potential situation where the C-Force and Wave Runners could have a bit more impact than they did last time. A pre-placed by Niccolo, not blown just yet, waiting for either a sound cure or intel, likely from the Yokais, to be relayed to the Mozzie. If that happens, that could be the one early pick they need to Ooh. fully stall Nocturne's out. Silent here is a good position as well. Walking up red stairs, could have a good flank. Lackey trying to catch someone on the cutoff. We're shooting through that rotate, and Silent will get the first pick upstairs on the third floor. Fiker goes down. So this is a chance that they have to now deal with Silent upstairs. If Silent can waste as much time and stay alive for as long as possible or get another pick, this could be big for Wave Runners. He's being bought by three members, though. He gets no picks, oh though. Mars is ready for it with that 3 3 weight. Down he goes, and that's two. That's, a, you know, the even ground so far for both teams, though. And time has been wasted. C4 is still in the hands. These C4s didn't hit, like, last time. And the round before that, these indirect C4s could make or break the round. So they can get a pick. From, and also Fico being the sledge. That's vertical yeah. pressure that makes it much more difficult for Nocturnes. That's a big thing for me. You still have these breach charges in the hands of Nocturne, so it's not all said and done by any means. They still have plenty of soft destruction at their disposal, but you don't have those nades, and you also don't have the quick and rapid soft destruction that you have with FICO. You don't have much at your disposal, and in fact, you're starting to use ash charges and I believe a thermite charge expended <laughs> as well overall. So there's not too much on the site they have to deal with. Maybe some are Rooney Gates, but there's no Goyo. There's only one deployable shield that's actually still in the pocket of Venna, so maybe we'll see that break, break out in the final 30 seconds but do they have enough to clear that Aruni gate it's still solid right now they have one impact lifeline they might burn it yep you can hear that sound cue just now the freezer drop is clear but wave runners also have a clear path to victory they have this site control they don't have any c4s but they still have these yokais and with not enough time left and players actually on the site to directly counter this push it's looking good for wave runners to secure themselves a 4-2 half unless the gunfights have anything to say about it the first goes and out turns way like he's able to spot nicolo in the back and move in for the bomb but here's this yokai got unspotted then awaiting his time the don <gasps> waiting for the most impact but he's down oh Mo creeps on in he's able to put him on the floor oh, maple. Maple as well but there's maple he finds the head gun unnoticed on freezer he rotates back in and secures a 4-2 half for wave runners oh my god you when you when you were talking about denying the plant maple was at the big window in freezer yo I was looking at oh, that, that and we're sick. watching him deny the plant and Maple's just dumping the freezer like he wasn't like he was a member of the attack or something like that. Like what the Uh That was great. That was an extremely well played. That was crazy. End round. From the start runners. though, yeah, that was entire roam clear, like Silent making his way all the way to the top floor, dealing with FICO and make it difficult for the Nocturnes to make that vertical play. Already a decent start. They got that first pick. They're able to refrag, so it makes it a 4v4. But then, like, still, the only thing is that freezer drop. Whereas they drop in, they take control of kitchen. Well, they think they took control of kitchen service. They make their way through, and they're getting that plant down. And, of course, the yokai was a big part. The yokai, the last second, he was waiting for that dying second to blast him, which he did. But then it was Mohes... Just to walk in a small bake, find, I believe it was either, uh, it was, it was Venna. Venna. Yeah, Venna on the yokai just sitting in the corner, kills him. But yeah, during that moment when he was on the yokai, you saw Maple in the middle of kitchen service, just jumping into the big window of freezer in the dying yeah, Venna, seconds. Like, five, what? Five, how did you get there? How are you there? I don't know. Venna might be the Don, but Maple is the godfather of kitchen. <laughs> but at the same time, at the same time. There's also a two four defensive half on cafe and now the and now wave runners they have to go they have to go to their attacks and this round i think will tell a lot for their chances overall coming off of a win like that a team like wave runners that's gonna feel really good that is gonna be a really good momentum boost overall but how they perform on this attack i think will dictate a lot of course they lose nocturnes and buff around but it also shows that they can handle the pressure that wave runners will apply pretty well lovely he's moved to that buck wave runners they like to run the buck last week or at least they ran it a couple times in their kcp game mm. correct me if i'm wrong benny but i believe they did i think they did a few times i think more than you expect most teams well now that now they have to rely on it for that soft destruction <laughs> so that's good hey they brought a backup unlucky. They did bring a backup. That is true. No. All right. Well, <laughs> unlucky. GG. Go next. 
Well, there goes both of your soft preachers in the first minute of the round. Lackey taking some damage, trying to run away, trying to back off for the moment. And Wave Runner so far in this clear have not been able to find a soul and lost two of their members so far in this roam clear. A minute's gone so far, and these still these members, a freak and Lackey are still just hanging around for his locks. Oh, what a shot from Freak. Oh Two God. for the round. He just slams Maple. Nicolo can at least get the refrag. He has some kind of information, but Lackey's there with him. Shots go on to him. Down goes Nicolo. It's a Vayner now in a 1v5. Vayner has no clue. He'll just ram, die. He Stop Freak from his lane of terror, but Vayner's still got four more members of Nocturnes to deal with. Hey, Freak GN down, though. That's, that's the important part. True. Freak is down for the count. <laughs> there are still four members, as you said, but Freak is down. Now, Venna has a chance. The problem here, though, not a lot of utility. And there's quite a few council barricades, uh, cameras still up, uh, players on the side of Nocturnes, actually, to, that Venna has to cut through. And that's the difficult situation. Does still have two nades, and there's also a rotate hole right there. But Nocturnes, they've rotated back down. They're in a prime spot to just collapse upon him the moment Venna gives himself up. A yokai outside a long bar as well. Nocturnes have every single thing they could want to take down Venna right now so when it comes to clutchable 1v4s this is certainly not seeming like it's going to be one of them there are two players inside of coach and no never mind okay so <laughs> nocturnes will take away that round and i think i asked the question okay what happens in this round because whatever happens could dictate wave runners chances i think we know which side of the fence that uh the projections now fall on yeah that was that was quite the start of the round just the fact that they were going through that clear that top floor here, like wave, wave runners are looking to clear out that top floor, and it was Nocturnes that killed both of their soft creatures in the first minute. I didn't even see the kills. Either. We just saw Freak and Lackey just dealing with them one after another. Yeah, once you lose, once you lose those two, <laughs> those two soft destructions again. We saw Nocturnes make do with what they had. They had an Ash. They had a Zofia for breach charges. But there, they had the Ana for nades. They had Nicolo with those breaches as well, but they had significantly less secondary soft destruction than Nocturnes did. So when they're faced with the, th the same situation, they lose their sledge, and in the case of Wave Runners, they buck early on. They did not have nearly the same resources to fall back on than Nocturnes did. Also on top of that, partially because of the Vigil, but also partially because of Wave Runners, the droning and the roam clear overall was clearly not up to par in that round. The Vigil, I could sometimes get, no, maybe you get caught off guard, but still, Wave Runners were getting a little bit ahead of themselves, and Nocturnes, every inch that Wave Runners thought they got, it was actually just an entire foot or yard that Nocturnes had the entire time. Yeah, I would say they, they could not figure out how to deal with those two players inside of dining, inside of reading. They had some players like Maple go Brown, go to Pillar, and try to get some kind of flank, but there wasn't a player right by white stairs ready for that refrag so even though maple was there trying to push the player instead of reading there was nobody to refrag he pushes that position freak slams him freak still is able to sit inside of reading so unfortunate yeah. for them freak did finally die in the end but still it was you know a one for four sale at that point <laughs> so homie go on to our next defense from noctis you go to reading and fireplace and really wave runners once again they have to show us they can either roam clear or bypass the roam We will see. Though Nocturnes, we are going to see if Wave Runners try to bypass their own, but this is not exactly a site, especially based on the lineups the Nocturnes are going. It's not a roam you can really bypass. On reading especially, with, and with how Nocturnes are playing this, you're going to have to try to push these players back. And it's a difficult proposition for Wave Runners to deal with. There's going to be two players up top. They might get aggressive on the Cigar side of things. Maybe Freak is feeling himself after last round. He'll peek a window or two. But they're going to be sitting on that Cigar balcony. And when you try to push up and you try to clear them out, you have FICO on the pulse, flanked by Mo with the C4, who will surely be playing on the site to try and C4 you as you make progress. So for Wave Runners, they don't have an option to bypass that roam. They have to deal with it, and Nocturnes have plenty of tools at in their arsenal to deal with it. I'll see if they can coordinate these utilities together to deal with the roam as we start out and we see, of course, Castle Barricades, Mozzie Pest, Mute Jammers upstairs. There's quite an array oh. of utility to deal with them. What, what's the word? Oh, wait. I thought I thought they were in the building for a second. I was oh, like, oh, no. They're, they're just going to rush. <laughs> no, they're outside. They somehow just transcended into the wall, through the walls. I saw I saw all four players on the same floor. I was like, oh, they're rushing. Oh, no, they're outside the building. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've seen before. We've seen close. teams just kind of bypass it. You know, they drone out and they figure out how much they put in this top floor room. And 
I think we saw what it was that I think it was Aquilix, maybe it was Gaster, somebody called the ro uh, a clear, uh, just a rush into reading. Like it can happen. You can do it if you. If I you think can it was SH last out. week. It might have been SH. I can't remember. It who wasn't. It, was. it wasn't a rush, but they a little bit of time had passed in the round. Oh, was wing, it wings? wings called the rotate yeah, back wings, down. Yeah, wings rushed into reading, knowing that there was nobody in reading. Got the first pick. Well, there's one person in reading. He got the first pick and took control of reading. So that could happen. It's hard to say, though. But wave runners aren't doing that. Yeah, wave runners don't be doing that. It looks like they're trying to full clear, and it looks like they're trying to figure out Lackey's the first person to get a deal with inside of Cigar. Grenade comes out. Looks like it might have been caught. No, it looks like it bounces too far and won't hit Lackey. Lackey's still playing aggressively inside of Cigar. Shots come through. He's taking quite a bit of damage. He's already low. Pre fires come out, and yep, it's Nicolo to finish him off. Now, Lycan getting aggressive. The moment he's put down to 25 HP, he's got to play his life there. But thankfully, Exod is there to make things a little bit sweeter for Nocturnes overall. Not only able to take down the, not only able to take down Venna, but the Yama as well. So a 4v4, now you have less utility. But Wave Runners, there's a reason they have this redundancy on the soft destruction. When they don't die as the two opening picks, they have so much at their disposal to try to deal with this. But Venny, you also asked, asked a question earlier. A minute 30 wasted on a reading room extension. Is it oh. enough time wasted? Well, right now, Nocturnes, not only are they wasting more, they they have Freak just sitting inside a cigar, waiting, waiting for that castle barricade to break so he can take that gunfight. He domes Niccolo, takes him down. And even though in a counter to last round, Wave Runners still have all the soft destruction at their disposal, they have no map control to speak of, and they have to rotate down. Do you consider that a waste of a C4? Because that was great. That was freaking fantastic. No C4 throws out by Freak. Won't get the kill on the person in red, and Freak's there ready. He slams Maple once more. And now this whole entire top floor clear has gone out the window. Lovely, making their way through train, but doesn't have the diffuser. Diffuser's in the hand of Freak. So now those two players either got to try and push something and get kills, or they have to push Freak together and deal with him on this red stairs first person is silent walking the stairs he has no clue where freak is the second person of lovely still no clue oh where freak Lord. is and both players go down it's nocturnes on match point this freak guy is kind of good at the game he's kind of a freak all right that was just <laughs> uncalled for that was just unnecessary we need to do that <laughs> well 6-2 right now for nocturnes it's looked okay for them so far. Wait. Hold on. What, what was that? What? I was actually, I was watching the replay. I saw, I saw Freak get that kill. Yeah. But then it said Exod got a double. Did Exod kill him? Oh, did he? He might have. I thought Freak killed him. Because he was, because no, well, yeah, he was peeking the bar door. So maybe... The yeah, eggs because eggs. I got that first kill through the bar door, so eggs almost needs to watch. Oh, the bar wait, door. E no, sorry, e e Exod was castle. I don't know why I had it in my head that Exod was pulse and he threw the C4. Oh, no, 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 Exod, yeah, Exod was a castle behind upstairs behind the bar, behind the mirror. Wait, I got, I got my, I got my wires crossed on that. Uh, okay. Also, if you want to, if you want to recap of that round, by the way, Wave Runners they tried to go for the standard roam clear over and they just they didn't have an answer. It was clear the mute mozzie combo coming at them didn't have the intel necessary. Nocturnes just played their setup perfectly played to just suffocate wave runners perfectly as well overall it was just a really good round for nocturnes and a non-existent attack by wave runners and now 6-2 match point they got to somehow get four in a row which seems like a uh, a daunting proposition yeah especially in a cafe a cafe it's very daunting daunting task to be done here we go upstairs to the top floor of bar and cocktail and of course, we see a similar setup we've seen before from many of the teams holding the cigar side with the castle barricade and the runic gate so far, no, I will say something different though. Nobody's playing that cubby because you usually see people play that cubby with a shotgun. If you drop down red, you get a shotgun to the face. But nobody's playing at the moment though. There is a shield though for, looks like the smoke of freak to play inside Cigar. And you know, smoke off red so you can't push into Cigar whatsoever. Yeah, and it's still a bit of a difficult position if those, if any ADS is placed next to him are burned. He's kind of trapped, not a lot of place to go. The Castle Barricade, I don't actually know if it's 12 hit like it was last time, so he has an avenue to break out. But again, kind of like the situation that we talked about with Wave, Wave Runners, if you just have somebody playing on that Cigar Repel or that Christmas Repel specifically, they can just cut them off. So it's a bit of a difficult position, but Wave Runners, they're opting to clear down from below, not going for that direct pressure. They'll open up some destruction, but there's Fico, ready to try and save the life of his teammate except from down below. They can't directly counter Freak through the floor. They can cut off his Rotate and... Now it's on Wave Runners. They have this setup to watch his cutoff. Now they just actually have to push him out. Yeah, I guess the, I guess the, I'm guess pretty sure at this point they know that one player is playing below and Freak's playing inside of Cigar. Smoke comes out. First drop from one of the players. It might have been at least the clone of Venna who's trying to figure out what's going on. Freak's got flash left and right, but 
first grenade comes out should destroy that shield shield goes down so now freak has no cover whatsoever can he leave now though michael's trying to pre-fire ready to give him some control but freak goes down and all of that aggression because yeah really at this point he's stuck in hard place looks like that castle period is not 12 hit but mohes elsewhere though deals with silent though yeah, now somebody's dealt with Niccolo and put him on the floor. Might have been Mohes, but whoever it was on Nocturnes, they made it an effective 3v4. Though Freak is finally finished off, the fact that he's able to not only waste so many time, a minute 30, but 20 additional seconds before he was finished off, Wave Runners are in a similar position to their reading room attack where they don't have all that much, but they do have more and they're in a position to scramble and try and scrounge up a little bit more control to push onto the site, but this is just another issue. Exot is still able to get aggressive inside a freezer. Hold the angle and the swing in from Nubalk. Blackie's playing on white stairs, and Fico still downstairs with a C4. Sets it up, it goes in, takes down Maple. Nothing has been cleared by Wave Runners beyond Freak's initial position, and that even took them a minute and a half to deal with. Now for Wave Runners, nobody on their team is above 25 HP, and they only have 25 seconds to make this work and stop Nocturnes from beating them 7-2. Mo will swing out. His second kill of the round achieved. Ooh. His third soon after. Not even moved an, an inch from that position. Lovely, he's rotated to the cocktail window. Blackie's not able to land his pre-fire, but Nocturnes, they're able to win this 7-2. Lovely gets his exit frag, but Mo gets his triple, and Nocturnes get their first win out.